Hello everyone, I'm at the Leiden International Film Festival right now and I've been seeing some movies. I won't be reviewing all of them, but there's at least a few I want to talk about. The one I want to talk about right now is the first film I saw at the festival and one of my most anticipated films of the year, Bones and All by Luca Guadagnino, who is likely one of my favorite directors working right now. Call Me By Your Name is one of my favorite films of all time, and I think Suspedia is pretty fantastic also. I'm not sure if this film is as good as either of those, and it is going for something pretty different than those, but I would be absolutely lying if I said I didn't love this film. His films usually have a strong sense of human sensuality, and although I can't say this film has that as much, it does have its own unique sense of identity in which every directorial choice can be easily justified for the narrative. This is very much a film about confusion, self-discovery, having to make your own bizarre decisions in life. It takes the form of a road movie you'd see in the 70s, and in some ways its violent nature can be seen as reminiscent of Badlands, but I'd say much of this film carries the melancholy and impulsivity you see in Leon Pete from Andrew Hay. In many ways, the film mirrors the general experience of queer young adults, and each moment that serves as an allegory for that experience worked for me in a very resonant way. At the same time, this is also a story about young characters cannibals, so it is definitely a lot more intense than just the regular old queer experience. But personally this aspect not once took away from its relatability for me. This isn't meant to be an empowering film, nor is it trying to pretend these characters are not monstrous, it doesn't show self-discovery as a journey with a clear conclusion, and it doesn't show such a journey as something inherently pure. This is a film that more than anything reaffirms how messy it can be to figure anything out as a societal outcast of any kind, and merely demands you understand that people with horrible urges exist exist in this world, but just like you and me, they have to cope with any desire they have, no matter how horrible it may be, and figure out how to navigate their lives with these desires, independently from the older people around them who continuously try to insist there's only limited options for people like them in the world. Thematically, this film is pretty damn clear and concise, but it never suffers from being repetitive or one note. The writing isn't always perfect, but it really fucking hits well when it needs to and there are several incredibly authentic scenes that are still on my mind. The journey in this film is one where I felt every single intended emotion. The quick editing had me constantly on edge, every moment of tension was genuinely scary, the trauma of these characters' lives was shown visually in a way that affected me in a very subconscious way, and honestly all this just seems like something Guadagnino has mastered at this point. One particular scene in this film is genuinely transcendental. The music there plays such a key part in its building of emotion and sensation, and although I can't recall if the score there had any melody at all, the more it swelled up, the more I felt I was right there with the characters in that exact moment. The visuals in general were also just incredibly resonant, along with its crazy decisions in terms of sound design and the order in which certain things would be shown. Everything here is full of meaning and emotional resonance without ever having to insist on those things. It's both controlled and exhilarating filmmaking, and my only issue would be that some of the cinematography looked a bit too clean or glossy at times for my taste especially compared to his other films. It felt a bit too clean for such a grimy story, and one of the supporting actresses was genuinely kind of awful, but she only appeared briefly in two scenes. In general, the performances were pretty great though. Timothée's performance is one of the most interesting and interpretable ones he's done in a while, and Taylor Russell from Waze also did a really interesting job. Her performance was a little hard to judge in the sense that it felt so naturalistic most of the time that I didn't even totally realize she was acting. Their chemistry and the romance isn't incredibly strong, but I honestly think this is very easily justified considering their bond is one of this born out of them being the only people that can understand each other, romantically or not. Mark Rylance was very entertaining as well as creepy, and I do want to mention with this character that he serves as a confirmation of this film's mediary point between naturalistic road movie character drama and retro genre horror film. There is a lot in this film that feels pretty cheesy in a way that reminds me of a John Carpenter or Wes Craven film, and it is a little odd to see that vibe of traditional horror storytelling combined with an untraditional aimless narrative, but weird Weirdly enough, it all just works for the internal journey of these characters. Just know that this film does require real suspension of disbelief. There's hammy aspects to this story, both in its dialogue and events and there's also some humor here that is quite funny. Elements of this film are really inherently ridiculous, don't make total sense, and it is kind of funny how clean our characters are in a film that should definitely, again, feel a bit dirtier. All of these are kind of nitpicks and they never take away from how satisfying this film is to watch, but you do need to be okay with all these things in order to get sucked into the story right away. It's all about going on this journey and finding ways in which you can relate this fucked up story to your own life. It was exhilarating, messy, and consistently intriguing from start to finish without ever going downhill. It's an incredibly well put together film and it won't satisfy everyone, but I do hope it's somewhat successful because it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's freaking great. 
it's overwhelming and I'll definitely be seeing it more than once. So all things considered, I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10, I'm pretty sure.